Good afternoon. It's Trump. Almost. America voted and made their decision loud and clear. Donald J. Trump will head back to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue next year after the economy and border security brought back his momentum. Kamala Harris asking her supporters to go home, despite Donald Trump not crossing the magic mark of 270. His chances are pretty high, with all battleground state returnings, that Donald Trump is leading. However, will there be a chance for Kamala Harris to grip power? Many say her path to victory is pretty slim. With the Senate control now going back to the Republicans and the possibility of the presidency too secured by Trump, how will the second-term presidency of Donald Trump be for the world and especially for South Asia? And how will geopolitics be impacted by a resurgence of a formidable political figure in the world? This is another There in a Special Report on the road to the White House. Now, reporting live from Studio 24, here's Mahesh Jani. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our special report on the road to the White House. Well, it's pretty over and we know who the winner is. Uh, before that, we want to uh, give you some breaking news. Now, breaking news on Other Derana 24. Well, according to uh, the uh, Associated Press and along with other U.S. television networks, they have projected that Donald J. Trump has enough electoral college votes to secure the presidency and will become the 47th president of the United States of America. This is indeed a big uh, event for America itself and also to the world, mainly because this was one of the comebacks in history, one for the history books where a, a man who has been crunched, pushed, completely cut off from every single possible avenue uh, made sure that he would not secure the presidency but democracy has once again prevailed American voters have spoken and they have named Donald Trump as their next president so we want to get uh, more insights into this what would this president look like a presidency look like what it, be, uh, what it would mean to the rest of the world. We saw one version of Donald Trump, 2016 to 2020, uh, didn't go well in the re-election bid and he lost to Joe Biden, who became, I think, in my personal opinion, one of the most disastrous U.S. presidents in history. Uh, he was senile from the get-go, could not make sure uh, 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 America's policies, America's agenda and America's leadership is not projected the way it was supposed to be. And here we go once again, the, that because of that, and also uh, Kamala Harris being one of the weakest candidates, in, again, in my opinion, uh, ha ha has failed. Now, Donald Trump has gone against two women who wanted to be the first uh, woman president of uh, the United States of America. Did not happen. Managed to get through all of them. Let's uh, break down this uh, big story that the entire world is speaking about. Uh, for that, um, joining me now is uh, a, a person who has been there uh, for quite some time. Uh, uh, from the get-go, uh, Udara, welcome back to the program. Uh, to good to here. see you. We've been uh, through this entire journey from the time I think uh, Trump was nominated. And, Trump, and was shot. <laughs> Trump was shot. Trump was shot. And this entire process, uh, it, it, it has been uh, a hell of a ride, to, uh, so to speak. Indeed, indeed. Uh, welcome to the show and also... Uh, uh, Pratibha Mahanabeheva, uh, Doctor, welcome back uh, to the show, uh, former Human Rights Commissioner. Uh, good to see you. A lot to talk about in terms sure. of Trump's presidency. And also, um, I think uh, uh, we have uh, Dr. Sarah Thamurugama, our for, former foreign minister, um, uh, Sri Lanka's former foreign minister, joining us uh, from his residence in uh, Bathramulla. I, 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 uh, we will be having him shortly uh, during the conversation for sure. Uh, so let me start with you, uh, Doctor. 
How do you read this, uh, uh, you know, worded by the people of America? This was a, a vote against suppression, against uh, the, the entire economic debacle that existed during the Biden administration. And here we go, they're asking for four more years of Trump. How do you uh, see all this? Now, my reading, Mahesh, thank you for uh, first you inviting me to this program. And uh, my reading is a little bit uh, different, as you said, because I look in a uh, few angles how the people of America, they have seen. The first thing, they were really against the illegal migration, yeah. which was very, very high. They could not control. Maybe Democrats, uh, they may had a little bit uh, liberal approach on this. So people were, now we heard you are Breaking news also, border crossing and all. So therefore, you can remember they were trying to build uh, Mexico, the wall. So anyway, a lot of uh, illegal migrants were there and uh, it was a threat to democracy. That's why uh, people of America, mm -hmm. specifically southern states, uh, they look in a different angle. And number two, I think uh, there was another one, abortion laws. Yeah. Because... Uh, Donald Trump camp, Honorable Donald Trump camp, they want to strict the abortion laws. That is where even an unborn child has a fundamental human right. So most of the Republicans, they took that angle, other than cost of living and other areas are there. And also uh, Donald Trump camp once again came with the climate change, that is Paris Agreement. This is where most of the time they were talking about in the election, this Paris Agreement how they are going to against that. Many of the countries where you may have seen uh, uh, this is not basically coming for a strict one. And I see NATO issue also there, later we can discuss exactly. trade. And the Israel issue, Russia, China and those issues. But other than that, what impressed me, I have seen in uh, that period when Donald Trump was there, United Nations Human Rights Council. So United Nations Human Rights Council, the two members from uh, USA, he had withdrawn them. Why? It is playing a big political game sometimes. So this is where the diaspora, also LTT bias diaspora, they were all supporting for this. So Donald Trump, Honorable Donald Trump, at that time he was not much interested about this and that's why in future, now we have to set up our own system for this uh, fundamental rights as well as the protection of human rights and we can come up our own resolution but may not give a good very high pressure very very recently i have seen how they are giving a pressure in a serious way so therefore we have to think in a very open way united nation human rights council sessions are coming in february and march sri lanka has to do a lot on reconciliation and other areas i think uh, we can cooperatively work with them so those are my little bit reading and further we can elaborate what i said earlier uh attorney at law udara Sosa joins me now uh, as well udara uh, you you saw from the time that trump wanted to secure uh, the nomination uh, it was not an easy task uh, there were uh, very popular uh, candidates uh, within the Republican Party, Ron DeSantis, uh, even Nikki Haley for, for that matter. But third time around, Trump, again, just I think that's his signature move. He keeps bulldozing all these uh, uh, positions and becomes the nomination and then now the president of the United States. Uh, it's not a consecutive uh, second term. Uh, he, Joe Biden managed to defeat him in 2020, and, and that election itself was, you know, uh, called to question by Donald Trump many times. And uh, in a situation like that, how do you see this wording where people are once again embracing Donald Trump as their leader? In short, uh, one thing for the Democrats, uh, you play, there's a very popular saying in uh, Atlanta where I grew up half my life, so you play uh, stupid games, you win stupid prizes. So <laughs> simple as that. So they, the, the Democrats' policies for the uh, last four years have failed. As uh, Dr. Uh, Mahanam said, the, the border security was yeah. a massive, ma issue. massive issue. Not only that, I think uh, the foreign policy has failed abysmally. If you look at their involvement in, for example, unnecessary conflicts such as in Ukraine, for example, which is costing 
the focus away from the domestic realities to focus on a, a war uh, of uh, attrition that they hope for for Russia and this obsession uh, meddling with the affairs of other states I think uh, which is very uh, uncanny for uh, Democrats actually if you if you look at uh, the Clinton's uh, regime between uh, 1992 to 1996. Uh, so, uh, even you can see, you know, like they they had a bit of a constructive policies. But I think since Obama uh, and then you know Hillary coming into play on, but the the U.S. Uh, the strategic focus of the U.S. have shifted in a very toxic manner, which has come back to haunt them and. You have a you prosecute. mean this woke agenda uh, that the Democrats were basically embracing kind of came back to haunt them uh, in a bad way because most of Middle America was not uh, even the Democratic Party's Middle America was not happy to uh, embrace those uh, very um, you know radical leftist policies. Not only that, you know, the, the I think the totality of you know the the fact that they. Apart, I mean, I, I agree with you. Essentially, the work policies are, are, are suicidal. But apart from that, the you know, foreign policy, for example, yes. the, the fact that now Donald Trump, Amish, they have the base. Right? Donald Trump has a clear base. Whereas, in, when it comes to Kamala Harris, what's her base? What's her base? You know, if you if you look at oh, most now, she has lost the support of the the Jewish population and also the Muslim population. I, I saw in Michigan, for example, she had Even a sizable, Hispanic, uh, un unbelievable, well. you yeah. know, so so I think the, if you want to run a campaign in anywhere in the world, you have to have a base and, you know, um, at, at least anti-Trump base was with uh, Biden in 2020. But now Not there is uh, now you have a more of an anti-Biden base than anything else. Uh, uh, Dr. Mahara Maheba, with regard to this entire uh, ideology of, of Trump being very, very uh, bad for democracy, uh, he's, he's one of the worst leaders. If he comes to power, we are going to see World War Three and all that rhetoric that was being put up by the Democratic Party became a joke at the end because nobody was listening yes. to that. These are my old slogans now. Even in Asian countries, we may have seen such situation. Now, Dr. Udara made a very good point, the strength of the foreign policy, which is there, who can manage that way. And he gave a good example also. Whatever the Trump believers and the Trump camp, they had a very good base, even after his defeat, they were slowly setting up. And what happened to Trump, you specifically say, even his TikTok or anything, all that was banned totally banned. Why? They knew a threat. So at that day, Democratic may had a plan to come up with certain slogans on that. Can you remember when uh, uh, Honorable Trump was there, he banned six countries. Yeah. Those who yeah, are, yeah, yeah. you know, yes. the first, uh, first year. First, you yeah. can remember, no, six countries, they absolutely banned, but when they went to Supreme Court, mm -hmm. it was lift. But what I want to tell now, there is a world burning issue in Gaza Strip as well as West Bank. So Trump can see in a very positive way to end that. And also enormously who is supporting for all these things we have seen, even violating air traffic laws, how they have, uh, you know, go and uh, 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 destroyed that. But they are all talking in the United Nations Human Rights Council, yeah, yeah, protect, yeah. The, protect the human rights. Now, let's see Palestine, what's happening. So that's why people also thought this has to be in. Even this time. And the other one has uh, correctly pointed out the uh, Ukraine issue. But I think uh, Trump may be capable to manage that. And also he has a very good team. That's why uh, sometimes we call, as you said, uh, US is the world policeman. But even they think that is exceptional. No, I think there are uh, good uh, policies when you read out his uh, certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, election manifesto and also how they are going to deal with South Asia. That is number one. So he must come up with good diplomatics as well as ambassadors how to deal with this issue. Otherwise, these ambassadors will come and just promoting internal politics. And, so, and on top of it, they keep interfering with internal <laughs> affairs. <laughs> and we've seen that uh, many times here in Sri Lanka yeah. uh, by, by the so-called ambassadors of America that has keep come during, especially during... Uh, they have a duty, you know, Mahesh. They have a duty 
what they want to do. But they have gone beyond their powers and always issuing statements. Yeah. Time to time, the Minister of Foreign Affairs has to call and get the explanation. So this is where it's uh, really, really came as a, you know, on the other side. It's a negative way. So I think Trump administration and how he is managing his foreign policy is very, very important for every citizen in the world. So I think if we come with that, definitely he will be the winner. So he has to win another time. Not only <laughs> USA, he must win the world also. Uh, Dr. Udara, with regard to Trump 2.0, which we are about to see, uh, yesterday I was listening, uh, uh, soon after this, um, he, he, he voted, uh, he was talking and uh, reporters were asking him a lot of questions. And the tone, the way he said things, it was quite different to the Trump that we usually know, who, who basically, uh, you know, uh, belittles people, uh, uh, accuses reporters and all. None of that was seen uh, yesterday uh, during, uh, you know, soon after he voted and came and spoke to the reporters. He was more or less a very uh, uh, leadership oriented. He, he wanted to take this uh, position very uh, reverently, to so to speak, understanding the fact that it cost him a lot to get to this point. Do you think Trump 2.0 is going to be a different version or are we going to see more of the same? Essentially, President Trump, he has certain qualities which, yeah. which, people, which, which people like yeah. and hate also. Yes. You know, so it's a, it's, a, it's a mixed reaction among the US public. However, I think now he understands that he has his base um, 100%. And I think uh, what he, I think he's aiming at, or at least trying to seriously focus, is to get that middle center right the vote base that has gone from uh, himself to biden in yeah. 2020 election back and to have a as uh, uh, dr mahanam said like to you know develop a team that can push him through because if you if you look at the trump's first uh, presidency so many resignations so many yeah, people yeah, have been yeah, fired yeah, yeah. It's, it was like a tv show mm -hmm. so it, you know this kind of a i think he he has recognized because he has not uh, had uh, held any uh, government office before 2020 uh, you know, election, so uh, uh, 2016 election to 2020. But after 2020, I think he, you know, once he got kicked out, I think he learned from some of his mistakes, and hopefully, I think he will try to balance. But I, I don't think you'll see a totally different uh, Trump. I, I don't think it's you know it's trying to you know uh, almost like to expect a you know cat to bark <laughs> kind of situation, yeah. you know. Uh, it, it's interesting uh, because uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that um, how will this impact uh, this region because that's mm -hmm. what we are more interested in. America has been a nation who has been interfering with Sri Lankan politics for quite some time. Uh, Dr. Mahanama here where the people have different opinions about it. There are real mm -hmm. facts we can uh, showcase during the times of crisis. They have um, interfered in political sentiments as well. Uh, and our leaders have not been strong enough to ask them, you know, yeah. remain in your camp and not, not uh, keep interfering. Now, in a situation like that, uh, but, but the four years of Donald Trump from 2016 to 2019, uh, 2020, uh, he was more interested in America, fixing America, not, not, not the world. He, he brought all the money back to America. He told Europe, uh, NATO, pay your own bills. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to foot the bill for you. Uh, if you want security, pay. But he did the same thing. All these unnecessary uh, agreements that America keeps spending, that is uh, basically uh, increasing their inflation, yeah. that he brought it back. Uh, and that was good for the world, so to speak, especially for countries like us. But uh, in a sentiment like right now, um, where global politics is at a, po a boiling point. We, we, we see two major wars which mm. could escalate into a, a third world war. In a situation like that, do you think Trump would be able to take it back and wrangle it back and ask everybody to be at their own camp? Uh, I don't think so. Now, for example, before coming to that question, Mice, you know, Guntanamo Bay. Yeah. Now, President Obama, before winning, he said they will close down the Guantanamo Bay, but still it is running. U.S. policies are very strong rather than the 
one man policy so they have a very good public policy and what we have to see whether they will give the military assistance 100% sure immediately trump camp president trump camp may not stop that but it has to be a humanitarian level so when you are giving the military assistance these they you can see how many 40000 50000 people they blasted there are some innocent people very yesterday have you seen how they attacked for a hospital yeah, uh, yeah. in a hospital cover, where is the red cross i am asking uh, there is a red cross no uh, i see rc even where is their flag they are not considering so i think trump administration they will look all these things and terrorists is a terrorist you can't bargain with the terrorists that part is also there so what you have to do there has to be some discipline and protect the human life because he is little bit talking about that's why at starting point i said abortion laws they is very strict about that republicans as well as they this uh, kamala harris camp uh, they want to more liberalize on that but uh, in that i will i have seen his uh, humanitarian grounds are also there and the other one i just want to tell you in future we don't know how these uh, power struggling is coming up in asia and most of the time what we have seen from aragale yeah, whether we don't know white house know that uh, to resign a president go and pressure a president and you will be the next president you know whole uh, stories were here yeah, in yeah. the aragale period taking I, over I, yeah, asking I, the speaker I, I, yeah i don't know whether they have instructed from uh, white house or not i i think this is uh, you know they want to set up and also sometimes back voice of america was here but it is not there us said also supporting we have to recognize that but all these things uh, they should help sri lanka to setting up uh, reconciliation or truth and reconciliation commission but other than that interfering how to govern sri lanka to govern Understood. sri lanka we have a parliament we have a president yeah. they will they will advise that is a little bit but beyond that if you take the leadership role that is where you are dominating others so usa should not a dominator but be a facilitator so absolutely. That, that, absolutely that's why my main argument for donald trump camp absolutely uh before we sh- uh, take a short break uh, i want to go to our f- uh, former foreign minister dr sarath amurugama who joins us uh, from his uh, residence uh, doctor uh, um, apparently this is something that you've been saying uh, for quite some time in 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 our programs uh, and thank you very much for taking the time to join us uh, this afternoon What are your reactions Donald J Trump has uh, secured a second term Yes uh, he has secured uh, the second term with a with a sweeping uh, victory and uh, uh, I think CNN these are all actually projections but uh, they are good enough and I think uh, very soon we will expect uh, uh, tra- uh, Trump to speak and also uh, Kamala Harris will early morning tomorrow uh, uh, concede uh, defeat. So the debate so far you have been asking how this uh, victory will uh, affect the, uh, the foreign policy of the United States. well actually uh, the foreign policy of the united states has been a disaster that is that is the achilles heel of biden and that has led this uh, spending on wars and uh, unmitigated support of war has led to a crisis actually in the american economy uh, right through the consistent theme of uh, Trump had been the American economy is being badly managed and as a result uh, it was very clear that the uh, the life's activity the daily round of most Americans but particularly the poor and the lower middle class the workers was uh, really uh, threatened by this Biden policy inflation was high uh, the cost of living was high and uh, and as trump clearly uh, stated he and his regime was much better for the poorer uh, americans and that is clearly seen uh, by the latino and black american vote 
which were, which on which uh, had is uh, depended and which is the traditional uh, democratic base has shifted it it does not mean of course that uh, the the democrats have lost complete control of the of the lower classes but their dominance of the those groups has completely gone and the most decisive message that comes from this election is that the foreign policy has led to problems in the uh, domestic uh, economic management which has led to inflation and which has led to a tremendous uh, return a tremendous uh, result a tremendous consequence for the uh, poorer people and uh, latinos and uh, black blacks who were who were considered the base of a possible uh, harris victory did not turn up as she expected and hence this result uh, uh, very quickly uh, dr amrugam we want to take a break but before that uh, kamala harris how do you uh, assess her as a, as a candidate because i think till june or july uh, you remember you were here suddenly uh, overnight uh, joe biden said uh, you know i'm not no longer going to be the nominee uh, for the democratic party and here kamala harris has to come and everybody was thinking she was the weakest candidate at that moment and there would have been more uh, better candidates within the democratic party but for the democratic party to gamble on her seems like it has failed so at the beginning as soon as biden withdrew there was a spurt of uh, activity and spurt of popularity for kamala harris but her two main themes were number one uh, the re- reproductive rights of women and number two democracy so so people thought that those two were popular enough and big enough to change the voting patterns particularly of the suburban women and rural women but that did not take place though that was a important issue particularly for the uh, middle class and the urban voters it did not resonate so much throughout the country so though she used it as a trump card it was not big enough to deliver a victory and number 2 the question of democracy uh that did not resonate too much because trump countered with the idea of migration that the whole uh, democratic situ- institutions the democratic way of life the democratic way of looking after uh, the poorer in the american society was all disrupted by this by this immigration so that was a, that was a message that the particularly the rural american voter and particularly the the white working class adopted that is clearly seen in the fact that the the blue wall kamala harris depended 100% on the blue wall pennsylvania michigan you know so that that blue wall has gone now so once the blue wall is breached then uh, that's the end of the Uh, democratic enterprise in nine, in in 2016 trump breached the blue wall then in 2020 biden managed to claw it back he he, he clawed it back but again now the 2016 pattern of the working class the blue wall has now returned to the uh, republican party and trump and that's a tremendous it's a tremendous transformation because you must notice that with this transformation the the democratic uh, senators the democratic uh, congressmen have all fallen like nine pins uh, together with this uh, triumph victory the republicans have captured both the congress and the senate so now trump has a clear path whatever he wants to do the type of laws he wants to bring the if he wants to Uh, put his, uh, his own people onto the supreme court all that will have clear passage because now the presidency the congress and the senate are all in the hands of the republican party and that particular trump wing of the republican party 
right now uh, we're we, uh, I mean uh, the Senate has been secured by the Republicans so all three branches of government uh, in the United States is now with the Republican Party which means um, the Republican uh, uh, policies and legislation will take center stage once again in the United States of America we want to see how that will trickle down to uh, places like uh, South Asia India uh, China how, how, how relationships with the, uh, those countries uh, might take place before that let's take a short commercial break the story around the world is that there is a new president in the United States of America and his name is Donald J Trump he becomes the first uh, uh, individual from I think uh, uh, former president uh, president Grover Cleveland in 1892 uh, since then he's the only president who has served two non-consecutive uh, terms which means he did not consecutively um, usually that's what happens in the presidency of uh, us but this time around he took a break uh, and he is now back in power let's take a short commercial break this is our special report on the road to the white house Welcome back everyone to our special on the road to the White House. Donald J. Trump has once again secured a second term in the presidency of the United States of America. Joining me uh, to uh, talk about this, to break this down, is uh, Dr. Udar Soisa, Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva, and also a former foreign minister, Dr. Sarah Tamurugama, who joins uh, us uh, um, from his residence uh, in Batramullah. Uh, gentlemen, um, let me come to uh, Dr. Soisa with regard to um, foreign policy. Let's talk a little bit on that. Uh, South Asia, the relationship with India, during the first Trump presidency, um, uh, Narendra Modi and uh, um, Donald J. Trump I, I had a bromance. They, 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 they were very much uh, in cahoot with, with things. And I think, in a way, it trickled positively towards countries like Sri Lanka. Uh, how do you see this particular relationship? Uh, uh, because once again, um, Modi has secured another term, I, I think five years uh, in back uh, as the prime minister. How do you see the relationship between India the United States under Trump and also China on the other side? I think uh, both these individuals, both these leaders are very pragmatic yeah. uh, individuals. So uh, rather than uh, what Trump does uh, is rather than putting, uh, putting forward an agenda, you know, for a long time uh, liberalization agenda or democratization agenda, he's, you know, he's a very he's a business person, you know, he's known for business. He, he will try to uh, develop the same connection, I think, because I, I, I don't think, you know, um, for him to go back on this relationship is something that, you know, will be pragmatic. So I think um, Trump being the president, of course, will uh, board very well for hi for India and probably um, perhaps maybe a little... Would that, would that be uh, economically beneficial? I think politically and economically both, uh, because you, you see how the, the US state work, it, it doesn't work mere economic or politics it's a it's a package deal right now for example you can see even when they are giving a certain economic reliefs you know they are expecting a level of uh, political <laughs> liberalization etc so i think um, you would see less interventions less interfering and also more um, long-term pro-capitalist policies to prevail and to come up with meaningful policies that will uh, safeguard the uh, economic and political interest of uh, both the leaders, I think. I, I don't think, uh, but I want to add something to what uh, Dr. Mahanama said. I totally agree that if you look at the, the US system, it's, there is a, almost at a deep state <laughs> is, uh, is always operative. You have leaders coming up. But now Trump kind of- Only person, I, I agree, I agree with you. He's probably the only person who 
to some extent, maybe to a limited percentage, challenge that. You know, everybody expected. I remember I was in US in 2008, uh, and uh, everybody was uh, so excited when uh, you know, Obama was there. You know, I was in Atlanta, and, and and people expected a lot from him. Yeah. Uh, like, like uh, my doctor said, like uh, removing uh, Gitmo, Guantanamo Bay and uh, so many different reforms. But ultimately, you know, Nothing he was happened. limited by the existence of that uh, the administrative apparatus that limits effectively the functioning of the even the head of state in US unfortunately uh, dr mahana mehwa now that's a very good point to pick on uh, because trump when he's challenged and he's told you can't do it that's exactly what he is going to do it this time around uh, they have told him you can't release the jfk files uh, he said the first thing i think about a couple of weeks back he said i'm going to release them uh, I, one i think um, uh, he, he, the navy of uh, uh, john f kennedy was supporting donald trump after he he was an independent candidate from the democratic party but um, then there are other people also who came and uh, you know surround themselves around trump because Trump seems to be the only disruptive candidate that exists in the world, uh, so to speak, because they no lo he no longer wants to abide by the rules. He wants to make the rules and be the rule. Yeah, actually now, if you see his campaign, Elon Musk was behind. Yeah. And you know, very recently, there was a Pennsylvania court case with the, he's giving dollars, million of dollars, but Supreme Court also say this is not connected to, you know, uh, politics or even for the political campaign, no campaign one is going campaign. to undermine. Yeah. But the best thing is where we have to see most of the time the business people were rally around him. And that is where you can build a country, he can give the leadership. And also uh, you may see a lot of uh, businesses, a uh, lot of investment from China as well as uh, other countries. Those were in Germany, a lot of in uh, USA. And USA investments were also now in Vietnam and, uh, you know, in Asian countries also. So how you are going to build this bridge is very important. So he cannot change any foreign policy, whatever existing. That is a myth, if you are telling no, that. No, but is he interested in changing foreign policy? No. Because I think he's more interested in fixing America. That's right. With these existing foreign policies, he may think for the next four years, what my target is to build America, whatever outside, we will bring it. And also, he should do not to interfere and spend time for other countries' politics and to fix those <laughs> countries. Yeah. So that is, I think, basically, he may do in the first two years. Dr. Amunugama, uh, we have a new president here in Sri Lanka as well. Uh, a, a, pr a, a new president who has no foreign policy experience per se uh, and also his ideology is kind of against what Trump believes in. Now, our relations with America, how do you see that uh, uh, basically moving forward? Because we are also heading for our parliamentary elections, which means there would be a new government as well. In a situation like that, how do you uh, uh, assess Sri Lanka's relationship with the United States with these two new individual presidents coming into the helm? Well, we have to carefully analyze our relationships with the United States once uh, Trump comes in. Trump's main objective is, in his own words, to make America great again. And that is, he wants to improve the economy of the United States of America, which, how, which at present is in dire straits. Actually, the economy of the United States is no different from the situation in Sri Lanka, because their real economy, where they earn money, is very little compared to the money they spend. The balance money they get through savings which are deposited in the US dollar. So the actual, because the US dollar is the reserve currency, the actual money at the disposal of the US is greater than what they are earning. For example, the Chinese, the Russians. 
the Indians, they all have large deposits of their savings in U.S. Treasury. So this is a very unstable situation. And Trump's priority will be to see that the earning capacity of the United States is increased. So this means that all investments must be in the United States. And the instrument he is going to use for that is tariffs. So the, one, of the, one of the debates going on in this present election just concluded was whether you could, whether America could offer, uh, afford high tariffs. Because Trump said, I am going to put big tariffs on Chinese goods, on even EU goods, so that the import of these goods will be severely restricted. That has two things. One is it prevents the outflow of capital from US as investments to other countries. And second is that it becomes more expensive for, even for the American consumer because all those foreign items now will begin to cost more. So what we will, of course, Sri Lanka, our uh, international sales and our foreign markets are so small and that they are not going to be jeopardized. But certainly China and India will be uh, highly worried because when they are on an upswing in their economy with this new tariff regime, they will also have to respond. So, so unless, the, unless it, is, it is managed properly, there is going to be a tariff war. So that is one thing. The second thing is the foreign policy that was discussed so far is being objected to by the Trump people not so much on, well, maybe also on ideological grounds, but mostly because it is a drain on US dollar. They are spending so much on Ukraine, so much on Israel, so much on other countries also which are favorable uh, to the US. And that is affecting the balance of payments, the economic position of the US. So he will follow a policy where, as he has already done in his previous, uh, previous regime, that is asking uh, EU, for example, to take more of the responsibility for their defence. America can't be spending all the money for your defence, you have to become a partner. So that was accepted. So now even regarding China and Taiwan and places like that, he will look at the whole thing to see whether he can cut the assistance, of course, so looking after the interests of America. So the economy will be uh, under scrutiny. And it will affect, certainly it will affect China, it will affect the emerging economies. And that is where like BRICS and various other countervailing organizations will now have to gear up for this uh, new uh, economic scenario. Biden, of course, had another thing. He didn't mind the outflow of uh, uh, money to Ukraine, to Israel and so on, because he was pumping up that money to help the uh, the industrial and armaments manufacturers in the U.S. So, the, and that was because of his ideological uh, position, which was determined by a group of hawks who were his advisors. We know that 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 group, an extreme group, which got hold of Biden, has even embarrassed the Democratic Party. So, what we can see is that uh, the the economics of this situation will change. And I believe economics will be in command, not so much uh, as uh, politics and foreign policy. So we have to navigate through that. But another thing is that by, uh, in the history of Trump, he is not worried about these human rights. Both Obama and uh, Biden carried this as their major badge to negotiate with other countries in the developing world. So that they ought to appear to be, that was the Obama seal, to be the champions of human rights. Now that, that of course, I think Trump criticized and he actually left the uh, United the Human Rights Commission so that uh, he will take a tough line uh, regarding uh, human rights, uh, about spending money and supporting all this nonsense of non-government organizations and all these people. He will take a very firm line and certainly not the, uh, not the foreign policy instrument 
that Obama and Biden created uh, to uh, interfere in the activities of the developing world. Indeed, uh, a lot more to talk about. Uh, I also want to go to uh, Canada uh, in order to uh, basically speak to our, uh, our, our, our reporter there, Susan Chanali, who's on standby. But before that, let's take a short commercial break. This is our special report on the road to the White House. Donald J. Trump has secured the 47th presidency of the United States. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to a special report on the road to the White House. Donald J. Trump has become the 47th uh, president of the United States. I want to take you uh, straight to uh, Northern America and to Canada, where our special correspondent, Susan Shanali, is standing by uh, in Ontario. Uh, Shanali, uh, a late nighter for you, it seems like. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, join us. Uh, now, what I need to know is, what is the sentiment? Donald Trump has come back to power. Uh, and, and it was expected uh, by, by many, many in the region. Um, how, how are people in the region reacting to this? Uh, thank you, Mahesh, for having me. And yes, it's three in the morning and still America is up. People are watching the election and Trump has just finished uh, giving his victory speech as well. So America welcomes their new president, Mahesh, or rather their former president back. And the race was pretty tight and both candidates were neck and neck. And many Trump supporters are already celebrating the victory as a return to policies that they favor, such as those on immigration, economic reform and national security. So this group may feel validated by his own, uh, by his win, seeing that it is uh, as a signal of resilience for the policies that he promotes. And Mahesh, I must say that there was a large turnout of uh, Amish population and most of them in support for Trump. So, And when talking about Canada's uh, perspective also, Mahesh, the Ontario government says that it's focusing on uh, maintaining good relations with the largest trading partner, though that may be easier said than done. And uh, as Premier Doug Ford said, that Ontario is ready to work with whichever administration that takes over the White House in January. So when talking about the Democratic Party, Kamala Harris uh, was, uh, was geared up properly and she gained significant backing and powerful support from Hollywood stars with the uh, major celebrities uh, throwing their weight behind her as she built momentum for this presidential race. So be it through speeches, performances or hosting events, celebrities have lent their star power to the vice president to promote her campaign. So it was even witnessed that Josh Gad were influencing people in the voting lines to support uh, Kamala Harris. So whatever said and done, Mahish, uh, America has uh, decided and it is very clear as to who has taken the reins. Indeed, uh, uh, Shanali, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, there's going to be another interesting election to watch uh, in Canada per se. Um, I think uh, Trudeau seems to be in trouble uh, in the upcoming uh, parliamentary elections uh, there. Yeah, opposition leader seems to be uh, becoming a hit around the world with his answers, very swift answers, uh, so to speak. But uh, we'll uh, get back to you in another time when that election unwell. Susan Chanel reporting there from uh, Toronto, Canada. Thank you very much. Okay, then uh, 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 let me go to uh, Dr. Mahanam uh, um, with regard to uh, Sri Lanka, I, I want to pose that same question yeah. that I posed to uh, former foreign minister. President Andrew Kumar Desanayake, a fresh president who has no experience in terms of uh, 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 basically running or governing uh, um, a country, now has taken the helm. We do not know who will be the next foreign minister because of the parliamentary elections uh, deal and who will come to that particular position. How would basically uh, the, our current president is seen as a socialist? Uh, he came, he, he has a socialist background, but not the, uh, not the party that uh, he represented right now. It, they, they don't clearly say that they follow that particular path. Now, how do you see 
the opportunities for Sri Lanka to uh, basically come up with better ties with America and actually have a better relationship uh, from the West with America and even in the East with China. Now, first of all, I have to tell this government is nearly one month or yeah. one and a half month. But the first thing I have seen by the present uh, foreign minister, uh, Mr. Vijdayap, 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 he specifically said, we are totally rejecting the resolution against Sri yeah. Lanka. That means this government also has a sense. So they know, basically, uh, this resolution, if you are taking so long, it can go to another session. But the new government is very lucky now. Donald Trump is there. Donald Trump never support. Former Foreign Minister, Honorable Mr. Amrugam also said that. He is not really interested. He take this UNHRC Council as a place where they play politics. Yeah. Most of these resolutions were sponsored by USA not at the Trump period. So Trump, once again, he may recall all these officers, they are just spending money. This is where not to interfere with other countries, give the technical support. That's why USAID is there. So what I see, even the new president has seen who are in the embassies present in Sri Lanka. We have seen all political relations. All, you know, so he, he may have a good vision now to clean the foreign service as well as appoint the best ambassadors. You have to appoint the best ambassador via UNHRC permanent representative as well as the other ambassadors. They take the voice. Basically, what I have seen, even I represented UNHRC sessions in 2018-2013, what I have seen, even the ambassador is not coming. Even the UNHRC, they don't know what's happening in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So the first sense, the new president, he may have a clear opening now. UNHRC may not trouble because LTD diaspora on the other side pushing uh, uh, Kamala Harris, but it did not happen. But now he must show, you said as a socialist government, Cuba, even Vietnam, even China, they are all together with Sri Lanka, with Russia. So what I mean, we must have a national policy and also national human right framework and a plan to present and get the support from the West. If USA not really dragging with this, only we have to win UK, right? So those experience I have and we need a country like South Africa and Japan. If we can go with this, definitely we can go to the real position. Uh, Dr. Soisa, with regard to uh, uh, legal frameworks that we, we keep uh, uh, headbutting, especially with UNHRC and all, uh, in a situation like that, how do you see that Sri Lanka can harness uh, the benefits of this new presidency and actually uh, uh, regain a different type of relationship because we have a new administration on this side of the, uh, uh, the country and uh, on the other side there, there's another new president as well. Uh, um, so in a situation like that, how, how, what, what do you assess? So uh, usually when we have domestic mechanisms uh, very frail and weakened, you, it, it creates opportunity in any circumstances for, for foreign interferences. So um, in my opinion, strengthening any mechanisms domestically uh, to ensure rule of law, to ensure democracy, to ensure human rights uh, mechanism within the country will uh, generally prevent uh, unnecessary interventions. But uh, I, I don't think under Trump's uh, presidency that uh, you know that we have to worry that much. But at the same time, you have to understand, despite all this, there is the uh, this administrative state, which is uh, you know like career officers, you know, in the U.S. State Department that who are you know within these units to monitor the Sri Lankan desk, etc., who have certain agendas and who have certain biases. So. Uh, I think this will all depend on you know how all of those different tires can be negotiated. But in my opinion, uh, in conclusion, you know, balance our uh, domestic mechanisms and keep a practical, um, constructive, non-toxic relationship with with the, with the U.S. And also, as uh, Dr. Mahanama said, you know, just just take firm stances when we have to. You know, we we don't have to allow the ambassadors and the foreign service people of other states to govern us. Yeah. I mean, we are not doing that, right? So it is very, I mean, one of the key concepts of international law is, as uh, Dr. Mahana would say, is sovereign equality. So why is sovereign equality? You Big know? goes so small. <laughs> it goes <laughs> what? Exactly. So <laughs> the, these are realities that, you know, we have to think, think forward, going forward.
Dr. Amarugam, uh, um, uh, let's uh, talk about Kamala Harris per se. Um, what went wrong for her? Because when you look at her entire campaign, the star power, the money, the entire mechanism of the whole Democratic Party was right there behind her. And yet the people, I mean, I think even uh, Oprah came, Beyonce, um, even uh, uh, I think a lot of uh, other celebrities also came and, and, and uh, uh, Mark Cuban, uh, another billionaire there. All these individuals came and said Kamala Harris is the choice. People of America said, nope, that ain't. Why, why do you think Kamala Harris was such a bad candidate uh, for the Democratic Party? Now, firstly, Kamala Harris had to carry the burden of Biden. Yeah. Biden was very unpopular and uh, his uh, management of the economy has been widely criticized, though he himself took up the position that there was an improvement. The general consensus is that uh, the life of the ordinary man, whether he is white, black, Latino, whatever may be, that it has become very difficult, due, particularly due to high inflation. So one thing was that, it, as they call it, the damned heritage of Biden also upset her quite a lot. Secondly, this idea that democracy was at stake and that this fight for democracy uh, didn't resonate with a large number of rural people who were uh, now worried about these immigration policies. And Trump created a great scare that, for example, that they will not be safe, that, that uh, rapists are coming into America and so on. And Biden made a fatal error by bringing these uh, immigrants and spreading them all over the states. So what was a distant problem of the South became a major problem even for the working class in the northern areas. So Biden was a big uh, problem for her. And the second uh, issue was that all this star power and everything really doesn't work when it comes to bread and butter issues. The management of the global scenario, for example, the wars, the terrible waste in uh, the Middle East, in Gaza, in, uh, uh, in Lebanon, uh, in Ukraine, all paid a heavy price, paid a heavy price uh, for the Democratic Party. You know, the irony is that, for example, in places like Wisconsin, which Kamala Harris had a very high hope of winning. Both the Muslims who wanted to punish uh, uh, Biden for his uh, policy on Gaza uh, and on Lebanon, as well as the, the Jewish community, both voted <laughs> against uh, Kamala Harris. And what was a blue state then uh, flipped. So Biden was a disaster and uh, she had to carry that uh, heritage. And secondly, the issue of, uh, of the reproductive rights, though it resonated very strongly with a particular group, uh, particularly the urban groups and particularly the forward-looking women and so on, she could not convert that into a national issue. So the national issues were uh, articulated and picked up by Trump, namely, firstly, the pathetic state of the economy, largely due to wars, and secondly, the migration issue, which is a scare thing. Normally, these, the, uh, poly, uh, these political advisors say the best way to win votes is to frighten the voter. The frightened voter is a sure voter. <laughs> so, so, right, so Trump carried that to the extreme, <laughs> saying that these people will be all over threatening your heart and home. So his message of the economy and migration that narrative certainly took over and, and crushed the counter-narrative that uh, Kamala Harris and the Democrats uh, brought out because that only affected a segment of the population. So that was the problem. And one more thing which is very important, which I noticed and which has been commented, 
uh, Trump completely changed the political strategy. Even in Sri Lanka or even in the democratic process there in the Democratic Party, they depended on people who come and knock on doors. Young people give a pamphlet, they knock on doors. Trump didn't follow that. He, what he did was he used uh, technology, electronic media, uh, he used messaging, he used social media. So that apparently, that has prevailed over this old method of knocking on doors because the new technology was used by uh, Trump uh, and that has also had an effect on this election. It's a sweeping victory because the blue wall which has always been the, the last resort of the Democratic Party and all the other battleground states uh, were lost to the Democrats. So they are really in a pathetic state. Absolutely. Um, before uh, we get uh, uh, final comments from our guests, uh, I want to go to Florida. I think uh, uh, a little while ago, Donald Trump uh, made his acceptance speech, and I think we have a, a little bit of uh, that video, if he can uh, bring that to you uh, right now. Uh, Trump basically spoke about how he is uh, going to be the president for the uh, entire of the United States and to make sure that uh, um, all his policies that he promised during the uh, election uh, campaign would be brought into life and to make sure that uh, people's uh, living conditions, the economy, uh, the border control. Day one, he said uh, apparent, uh, he is going to deport a lot of uh, uh, people who illegally came into the United States and to make sure uh, that uh, border security is once again restored. Uh, we will, uh, despite the fact that he won the presidency today, that does not mean um, he's basically going to be the president tomorrow. We had to wait till January, January 20th is the day uh, because uh, America has this beautiful system where uh, just because, uh, not like ours, as soon as uh, the president is elected today, everybody rushed in to uh, uh, you know, give uh, um, oaths or anything. None of that. They, they, they wait. There is a transition period. They want to show people uh, the beautiful process of peacefully uh, transferring power to the next administration. And that particular process will uh, take place right now. As per... Um, uh, basically, uh, uh, the entire thing dict dictates uh, the former president, uh, the outgoing president, which is uh, going to be Joe Biden, needs to invite uh, Donald Trump uh, into the White House and have a, a cordial um, conversation. Last time it didn't happen in 2020, uh, Donald Trump did not invite Joe Biden and Joe Biden said he is not going to the White House. Uh, and, and we saw during the oath-taking ceremony, uh, both were missing uh, in each other's oath-taking ceremonies. It's going to be interesting as well. Uh, I, I think uh, we apologize. I think we have problems in bringing that uh, speech to you. But uh, actually, let's go to that speech right now. America has given us an unprecedented and powerful mandate. We have taken back control of the Senate. Wow, that's great. And the Senate races in Montana, Nevada, Texas, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We're all won by the MAGA movement. They helped so much. People have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country and to restore America to greatness. Let's get uh, uh, to our panel once again here. Uh, gentlemen, uh, final words. Uh, Dr. Udara, uh, what do you expect to see uh, in this uh, new uh, era of Donald J. Trump uh, 2.0? I think uh, more or less his 2016 policies a healthy amount of drama that is usually <laughs> uh, usually uh, involved with Trump, and you can see that uh, CNN and most of and the people expect that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's you know uh, people clearly expect, and also you can see the CNN etc. will go on a heavy massive the propaganda will boost uh, again. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, like, uh, attack on uh, him. So there will be uh, I think the U.S. politics will be uh, a lot more interesting as well, and um, my hope and. Uh, which is that uh, you know, this transition will uh, lead to a greater 
peace in the world, especially okay. uh, reducing the U.S. aspirations in uh, in Russia, uh, and also giving uh, these groups like Hamas, uh, Iran, etc., you know, a push to just end this, and also balancing Israel aggression as well in in Gaza and West Bank. So hopefully, um, positive with uh, some reservations. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahanameheva, I'll give you the last word um, with regard to Donald J. Trump. Uh, peace is going to be the key factor in the next uh, few years? Or? Yeah, two words. World peace. He can build that because he has a lot of connection with Putin government as well as other governments. So he may be very respected and trustworthy person. So that is number one, building the world peace. Number two, climate change. Must be very careful in future how these climate change agreements are coming up. So not to bias one side, to build that. And also, this is where the illegal immigrants as well as others, you have to see economic reforms. We don't know what time these type of loan issues are coming up. And I'm not going to elaborate more. So three things I'm expecting. Number one, to give a world peace. He may be the symbol. Number two, climate change policies should come up. And number three is where he, I have my fullest trust, he may not interfere, Sri Lanka or any other country, violation of this type of bogus human rights resolution. Now we have to stop. He will be advocating enough. that. Yeah, exactly. It's enough. Uh, I think we have uh, had, had that entire round going in circles with no uh, uh, results uh, on that. Well, uh, that's it uh, from all of us here at Other Than 24 with our special report on the uh, road to the White House. We will have more on our uh, World News Bulletin uh, that is coming up at 9.35 in the night right here on Other Than 24. Dr. Udara Sarisa, thank you very much for being here. Seems like, uh, you know, finally uh, this is the result. Yeah, uh, let's uh, let's like, hope for a good four years of Donald J. Trump. Dr. Pratibha Mahanameheva, really appreciate you coming here and uh, speaking to us. And also our former foreign minister, um, Dr. Sarah Tamdugama, appreciate your time as well. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again in another uh, session, a uh, special report, uh, just like this on another subject that matters to you. This is Adhira 24. Thank you for watching.